Now we just uh, try, okay, a little bit, but we don't, we didn't give much information yet. So more, more we give information, so more you understand the working of the mind, so more maybe you get some also success. You find some benefit also, not only in the meditation session, but in daily life also more vigilant, more mindful on the thoughts after arising of the emotion, you know, like something we get some experience. So same thing for me personally, you know, like since maybe now almost, uh, I think uh, maybe some almost 15 years, I, you know, I'm giving some teaching, you know, uh, before that also I began to practice, but I'm giving teaching, but also from my side also personally, I see a little bit change also, you know, when, when I explain also, I understand a little bit better, you know, like I don't understand uh, something like very high level, you know, I, I don't understand so quite well, but still my understanding improves. So my, also from my practice, I practice also a little bit. I'm not like great practitioner also, just I, I do my best every day. I practice for sure every day I practice, but not like sometimes people, they practice all day long, you know, I'm not like that, you know, like uh, doing like retreat in a cave, like something like this. I don't have this kind of experience, but still year after year, I see some more, a little bit understanding. So this way, same thing for you. Maybe you practice a little bit. So after a few weeks, after a few months, maybe you see also something uh, like this in the quality. But as I told you, it's not only while you meditate, you feel some benefit. The important point is that improves our own life. If it improves our own life, inner life, so it improves also external life. Improves our life, so means also improves other people's life. You know, uh, we say in Buddhist philosophy, uh, all the meaning of Buddha's thought is, if we cannot help, we should not hurt. <laughs> so at least, even if we cannot help, at least if we hurt less ourselves and we hurt less others, so this is, we're contributing to peace in the world. What we see nowadays in the world, in the news and people violence, so this hurt other people. So at least if we refrain from hurting, this way we contribute for sure in peace of the world. You know, like so many people, they have violent deeds, violent speech, or at least violent uh, thoughts. So at least if we reduce that, for sure we contribute for peace in the world. Sometimes people think, oh, meditation, we don't do nothing for helping in the world. Yeah, I think this is a, you know, like basic, ba basis of peace in the world. If we have peaceful mind, so we do peaceful deeds. So best, we do altruistic action and words. So this is still best. Even if we don't do nothing good, like uh, helping, we don't hurt, this is already good. This is already wonderful if we do that. So, uh, yeah, as I told you, if there are some questions like this, what we saw already, you can ask also, no problem. Sometimes you don't ask question now, but later question happens, so okay, no problem also. <laughs> some things, uh, sometimes also <coughs> me myself, when I prepare my class, some question happens, sometimes I don't, I don't find the answer, so I ask my teacher also, I ask sometimes like this. So, today we see, um, like, like uh, I told you, we have uh, the main technique for finding calm abiding. We call calm abiding meditation, means mind abiding in peace, mind abiding peacefully. So actually this is a, in the drawing, it's like the 10 step, you know, like there's 11 steps, 11th one, we don't speak so much in this class because it's more related to special insight. I think we have maybe one class, maybe last class about that. So most of the class is about calm abiding. So it's an, the, in the 11 steps, it's the 10th one. So the 10th one is really calm abiding. Nine steps before that is progressing to that. So first, our mind is not so much experiences. So we, have, we are not able, you know, in the first step, you see like, uh, later we will explain all the details, but you know, the monk is the meditator, elephant is his mind, so mind is crazy, you know, like we try to calm the mind, mind is going everywhere. It's traveling the world, thinking about the past, future, like uh, first step is like that. But more we progress, more we can with mindfulness, we protect the mind, we keep the mind calm. After it escapes, we bring back, after we peacefully, so after we have real true mastery of the mind. When we attain calm abiding, it's like mind is doing what we say. 
I want my mind to be peaceful, be peaceful. We want to think about something, we think like we have full mastery of the mind when we attain calm abiding. So we should step on that. So what prevents us to have this kind of full mastery of the mind and being always peaceful? There's five things. So that's what we call five hindrances to calm abiding. So actually anybody can have peace of mind, but to have this peace of mind, we just need to remove these five hindrances. But five hindrances is not like material stuff. If you have five things hindering your room, you just have to call somebody to pick them up, you call Kijiji, or you uh, just do it by yourself, you know, just cleaning. This is easy. But this mind, difficult. <laughs> Even if you, you ask to your good professional of mental health, example, you say, I have this problem, can you remove this for me? He cannot do. You know? <laughs> Even you ask Buddha, he cannot do for you also. <laughs> so this way we say five hindrances through our own practice. You know, Buddha is just advisor. Like uh, we can say like, uh, same thing we say psychologist, you know. Buddha is like psychologist, he gives you advice, <laughs> but he cannot do for you. So Buddha is just giving teachings on how he attained this state and how we can also attain this state. But as Buddha said, uh, I teach you the way to liberation, but liberation depends only of yourself. So this thing, five hindrances, we need to uh, practice. We, we need to uh, remove by ourselves, by our, our own practice. So this is inner practice, you know. External kind of problems, physical problem, we can remove ma mainly through external way. But this kind of five hindrances are more on the internal level, on the mind level. So mind should be healed with the mind, you know. Physical problem is healed with physical treatment, but mind difficulty is removed through mind uh, techniques, you know? Sometimes, like in the West, we have this kind of techniques like we use some medicine for the mind. But this, I think, just uh, maybe calming some in a chemical way, some things, but real source of mind difficulty is the mind. So we, in Buddhist philosophy, we say through practice, uh, through meditation, we can uh, all change the, the workings of the mind. So this uh, uh, five hindrances, we have five hindrances, so we see in the course these five hindrances. So today we see first hindrance, number five. Uh, so next week is uh, Lama Santen, my teacher, he's a Tibetan monk, he will come, so we continue. <laughs> I, I, give you, I give him four hindrances, <laughs> I only teach one. <laughs> but we teach same number of antidotes because first hindrance has four antidotes. So I teach four antidotes <laughs> because there's, you know, five hindrances, eight antidotes. So how it works? First hindrance has four antidotes. After each of the last uh, <coughs> hindrance has each one antidote. So tonight I teach you four antidotes. So one hindrance, but four antidotes. So among the four, uh, five hindrances, we say, uh, like there's kind of, a, you know, like a, this kind of a levels, you know, like I think first hindrance we place first because may mainly hinder our practice, hinder our progression on calm abiding, firstly. So that's why we put uh, this first hindrance uh, in, the, in the first level. So this first hindrance we call in Tibetan, we say lelo, okay? But when we spend, translate in English, we say laziness. <laughs> yeah, this laziness. We call laziness because, example, okay, you think about any kind of external project you have. Example, you want to clean house, you want to do your, how do you say, tax income paper, you know? So you want to do that, you want to, I don't know, do some work, you want to do any kind of, you know, or you want to do exercise, you want to do yoga, any kind. So, first thing hindering our activity is, I think, laziness. So, for any activity, not only for meditation, now we're speaking about how to attain calm abiding and the practice of meditation, but here, laziness is uh, affecting, is hindering any kind of activity we, uh, we like to do. So, actually, in uh, Buddhist text, what we call laziness, okay, we call in Tibetan Lelo, the, uh, each of the kind of, uh, we, uh, we call them um, mental function. Some mental function we call positive one, 
some mental function we call negative one, some are neutral depending on the situation. For example, sometimes we have intention. Intention can be positive, can be negative, can be also no positive, not negative. We have different kind of intention. Also we say sleep. Sleep can be also sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But what we call laziness, we call is negative. Why we call negative? Because hinder our positive activity. What is the problem that our positive activities are hindered? It's because we say in Buddhist philosophy, everything is interdependent. Nothing exists by itself, by its own power. Everything happens through interdependency. So as everything happens through interdependency, also happiness happens through interdependency. Happiness, from Buddhist point of view, happiness is not coming from external thing. For example, uh, we pray to Buddha, may I have happiness? So Buddha is like uh, seeing us, he said, okay, I get, I send you happiness, like shower of happiness, not like that. You know, like in Buddhist philosophy, happiness, we want happiness, we have to put all the causes for happiness. For example, we need vegetable. You say, I want to have in my garden vegetable, uh, gar uh, organic vegetable this year. But you never go to shop to uh, buy some seed, you never put the water, you never put soil and manure. So you say, I want to have nice vegetable. It's difficult, you know. You pray to Buddha, even he cannot do for you. <laughs> you believe God, you believe Buddha someday. You ask a Buddha, he cannot do for you. So we say everything is interdependent, also happiness. Happiness, there are specific causes for happiness. We call this specific causes for happiness positive. Like, what we call in Buddhism positive, we say this is cause of happiness. What we call negative is cause of suffering. So that's why, that's how we choose the term positive and negative. For example, if you say, oh, this telephone, this thing is positive, because when I see, it brings me happiness. I don't, I don't think so. Because other people, when they see, they say, no, I don't like doesn't bring me happiness. So this is not positive. Positive is more something related to our mind, state of mind, like intention. For example, if I have compassion state of mind, this is positive because bring me inner strength and happiness. If I, if I have anger, fear, jealousy, hatred, this is negative because for anybody in all situation, doesn't bring uh, happiness. Positive state of mind always bring so this is the meaning of that. So laziness, what we call laziness, it says, uh, the definition of laziness is uh, absence of joy in something positive. Absence of joy in something positive. So if you have absence of joy in something negative, this is not laziness. For example, your neighbor, he call you, and you want to go with, we go some uh, robbery, we do some robbery, you know? If you say, oh no, not today, I'm, I'm, I want to rest. So this is not laziness, you know? <laughs> so this laziness means only when you have ne uh, positive things we want to do, so laziness happens. Actually, we are more easily lazy than enthusiastic. Usually, you know, like positive things, I don't speak about like activities. Sometimes we have nice summer, like uh, we have nice uh, day example, we have good uh, show, music show, we always, we go, we're not lazy. No, not like that. I say something like positive activity, like bringing happiness. Because the music show is nice, yeah, for sure it's nice, but I don't think everybody go to the show. For example, this Celine Dion is singing. Some people, they say, I go. Some people say, I don't go. Some people, they like to listen. Some people, they don't like. So something positive means always bringing happiness. So positive action is difficult for us to do. For example, example of positive action, meditation. When you do meditation, are you always enthusiastic? Or sometimes no. <laughs> if your friend got, call you to go restaurant, you say, you have project to do meditation tonight, but your friend, he calls you, he say, okay, we go restaurant, I pay you. So you say, no, sorry, I have to do meditation. <laughs> or you say, okay, okay, I go. <laughs> example, okay, this laziness happens through meditation, I think. 
But if we have real understanding of meditation, it's possible. We say, to, oh, sorry, tonight I'm so busy. I have some positive activity. <laughs> I do <laughs> meditation. <laughs> you know? But uh, this is difficult, you know? Most of us, we, uh, like, this positive activity, we are is easily lazy uh, most of the time, you know? So, actually, it's kind of easy to, to look. Uh, example, we have uh, negative state of mind is easy to develop. Positive state of mind is we need to take effort to be mindful. For example, tolerance, intolerance. Anger, patience. Which is easy, which is hard. You know? Anger is not hard. You just ask somebody, okay, just tell me bad things, you know? Just one or two things after you're angry, it's easy. If you say, okay, I will practice tolerance. You know, very difficult. So like this, positive state of mind is really difficult. Uh, negative state of mind is easy. So, but because we have this habit, if we change habit, for example, we call Buddha. Buddha means somebody has positive habit. So Buddha, he never get angry because it's too much positive habit. So same thing with us. If we develop more and more positive habit, becomes easier, easier, easier. So this power, so we can progress on the stages. You see in this image, they represent like we have fire. <coughs> you see the fire? There's a, every step there's fire. But when you pass the sixth step, there's no more fire. Fire represents energy you have, for example, push yourself, you know? I want to do karma by meditation, I want to practice. First of all, you need so much energy, you know? So, uh, okay, I will do later, you know, yeah, laziness, easy. But after, more you progress, more it's easy. After it becomes natural. So this is uh, uh, because laziness and all hindrance are over. So. First hindrance we call laziness. Laziness, uh, there's we call absence of joy in something positive. Uh, usually, uh, this is a general way of speaking of laziness, but in the text they mention three kinds of laziness. So most common, I think, when we think about laziness, we think about the first one. We call sometimes procrastination. I will do later. You know, like that. You do later. I do later. For example, you say. Example, it's possible maybe you, now you're interested in uh, meditation, you come to meditation class. But maybe you, uh, since long time you're interested, maybe also, but you say, I go later, I go later, I go later. So now you come now, okay, for example. Or same thing, you come uh, to the class, you say, oh, now I don't have to be lazy, I will practice meditation. Tomorrow morning, I do, okay. Last week, I didn't practice, so this week, yes, I will not be lazy, I will do tomorrow morning. So you have tonight this intention, Tomorrow morning, you wake up, oh, you bet snooze, a little bit snooze. <laughs> After you, oh, too late, I do tonight. I will do tonight, you know, this procrastination, we do tonight. After tonight, we come back, so a little bit tired, because work. After we have to take care of children or something else, cooking. Okay, I do Facebook, oh, it's tired, I go to sleep. So we say, okay, I do tomorrow. So like this, tomorrow, after tomorrow, after, in the weekend. Weekend, I'm more, more relaxed, but weekend, they do, if they do nice weather, you say, oh, too much nice weather, I will do next weekend. So like this, you know, I will do in holiday. Some people already, uh, already told me, I will do when I'm in re retired. <laughs> you know, <laughs> too long, you know. I, somebody, I think I told you maybe also, so, uh, one of my friends is, uh, uh, he has Buddhist belief, so he told me, uh, I do more practice in my next life. <laughs> this, uh, I didn't say him because I respect him, he's my friend, but I'm thinking immediately, so much laziness, you know? <laughs> I'm just laughing, not la laughing silently, you know? Laughing in myself. <laughs> so, this, uh, we should not be like that, you know? We should more, uh, every day we think, oh my, uh, you know, like, uh, what kind of thing we can do to remove this kind of laziness? This is not actual uh, antidote, you know? I will speak after about what is the antidote to laziness. But for this kind of laziness, there's a specific kind of antidote. You know, not the four antidotes I spoke, spoke to you about, but another specific one. When happens this kind of laziness, okay? Not only for meditation, for any kind of positive activity. You, this happens laziness, we should think about impermanence. You know, in Buddhist philosophy, they mentioned so much, Buddha spoke so much about impermanence. For example, his last teaching was that, you know, because when he passed away, 
you know, many people crying, you know. Same thing, you, you see uh, the news uh, yesterday in the Paris, many people crying, example, okay. So this uh, happens also because we don't think so much about impermanence, you know. When something breaks, when something happens, we get sick or we die or people die, like this we surprise, we feel very sad, so strong emotion. Some people sometimes they feel suffering also for a long time, you know, like sometimes one week, two weeks, one month, two months, one year, two years, five years, maybe sometimes more. This is because not accepting impermanence. So when we think regularly, constantly about things, never stay, you know. Like, uh, for example, one uh, Tibetan saying is saying, uh, what will happen first? Uh, my um, tomorrow morning or next life? We don't know. For example, in Buddhism, we speak about next life, okay? So, tomorrow happens first or next life happens first? So it means we always think I will be here tomorrow, but we don't have this kind of certainty. How can we? 100% sure. If we think like this, for sure one day we will make mistake. We say, I will do this tomorrow, but this is not possible. So like this. Our life is so precious, so short. You're, you think about your life, you know your, you know your age now. Since how, where you were born, how many years pass? This pass so fast, you know? So fast, you know, like 10 years, like this, it's passing. So if we think in 10 years, we'll pass also fast. So we should think every day, Every second, every moment is so precious. If I wait for my happiness for later, this is uh, not a good idea. Why should we wait for getting happiness? Positive activity is for getting happiness. So when we want to do something positive for our well-being, like example meditation, we should not push back later. We should say, no, this is impermanent life. I have no life is passing too fast. I should take this moment for helping my mind to be more peaceful, to be more happy. So this removes first kind of laziness. You understand? This first laziness is thinking through impermanence. You know, life is precious and it's impermanent. This kind of thinking, you, I told you, not every kind of thought is, is bad. Because this kind of thought, you think like this, helps you to peace, to calm the mind. Because uh, if you don't think like this, we get lazy, 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 lazy. So one day we regret. We say, oh, I should have done, but it's too late. You know? Sometimes we wait too long after we regret. So this is not good. Positive action we need to do now. And uh, laziness hinders that. So to, to cut this laziness, we think about impermanence. So this first laziness. Second laziness is more related to being busy, but not in the good thing. You know, we employ our time in something not beneficial for us or not beneficial for others or even harmful for us or for others. So this is the, uh, we should not do that. We should think about life is precious, life is meaningful, so I should give meaningful uh, meaning, you know, like meaning to my life. Sometimes in society we, we see so many things like negative action, harming each other. You look on Facebook, you look on the, uh, sometimes in the internet, People always saying uh, negative words, you know, like harsh words to others. I think this is a kind of losing time, you know. We have precious life. We don't have time to say bad things to others. It's not fun, you know. Not give, it doesn't give fun in the mind. doesn't give peace. <laughs> not helpful. <laughs> we should take more time to say positive things, helping others, to at least taking rest for us, taking some holiday, not being too much in the busy uh, lifestyle, you know, like too much stress and after feeling burnout or depression like this, we shouldn't go in this kind of system like that. We should be more peaceful, taking time for positive activity, enjoying the nature, meditation, time with friends and family, this kind of thing to bring us more peace in the mind. So if we, we take too much time, we, we, we look like busy person, not lazy, but this we call also laziness. When we do negative activity, negative or uh, useless, you know, like uh, when we think, why, why did I do that, you know? I spend so many time, you know, sometimes something is not at all important in our life, but we take so much time to do that, you know? Example, uh, I don't know. Yeah, for sure we have to clean house, okay? But sometimes something uh, 
We take two hours, just something like cleaning like this. Exactly needed or not needed. Sometimes we have to think, you know. I take too much time to do like this. It's never finished. But it's important in my life. So like this, we think like this. This is second kind of laziness. Laziness about doing something not beneficial for us or even harmful. So this negative action we replace by positive action. Is it okay? You understand this one? So third one. Third one means laziness of um, I forget the word is like um, like discouragement. You discourage yourself. Okay, I want to practice meditation, but I'm too much agitated. I have no m mindfulness at all. I will never achieve. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm not a monk. I don't live in a cave. I live in Toronto. It's too hard. Some kind of, kind of thing. My my job is too stressful. Some you find all this kind of reason to discourage yourself. I will not achieve. No, because in a one uh, sutra, you know, when the uh, Buddha is sp spoke, they call it sutra, you know. In one sutra it says, Buddha, even flies one day can achieve enlightenment. <laughs> 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 so, if flies can attain enlightenment, we can. So, like this, but I think the meaning of that is because in Buddhism we speak about uh, reincarnation, rebirth, so I think this fly now attaining enlightenment is very difficult, but next life, when she may be reborn in some human, <laughs> so now she can attain enlightenment, but now we are human, so why do we wait? We don't need to wait something to get a fly, no. We already have the best condition for practice, meditation, so everybody can. So we should not discourage ourselves, we should think, I can do, I will do. So this brings, you know, so you understand like this, we, we need calm abiding, we need peace of mind, this peace of mind is coming through some through meditation, but if we have laziness, we don't even begin. Even if we begin, okay, oh, I will do later. So we don't have energy in the meditation. Real antidote to laziness is enthusiasm. We call sometimes joyous effort. You have joy, you know, like children when they play something, or you, we see sometimes some people, not children, but so much enjoy the activity, you know, when they go to play some sport with friends, and, oh, I'm so happy, you know, like, never want to stop, you know. This kind of joy we need for meditation. If we don't have this kind of joy, I think always something happens to hinder the uh, meditation. So we need calm abiding. Calm abiding is through our own practice or effort. We need to cultivate in daily life mindfulness, vigilance, to develop this positive quality. So when laziness happens, okay, I will do later. So when we do later, we never achieve. You understand? So this three kind of laziness, you know, uh, procrastination, doing something else not beneficial for us, but I don't speak about, okay, so I think uh, work is not beneficial, I will stop my work for meditation. Not like that, okay? We need some activity for our life. I told you before, uh, in Tibet, yeah, there's some examples, some people, they only meditate, some people they bring them food, but we don't have this in Toronto, impossible. So we need to work, we need to, we need to take time with family, we need to take time for our necessary activity. But more than that, we're always busy in something not necessary for us, or even harmful for us. So this is the meaning of that. And third one, discouragement. So like this, when we know these things, we, okay, okay now, I will do now, you know? My life is precious, I want to do now, find more peace, not later. I don't want later to find more peace, you know? Maybe something, I said, later will be one day too late. No, I want peace now. <laughs> but not to stress also, some, one, uh, one day one person asked me, she told me, uh, how can I get peace now, you know? <laughs> like too much, like, uh, uh, I, I already read also one, uh, I think it's some, maybe Zen master is uh, speaking to his stud student. Student is saying, how can we achieve uh, how long to achieve enlightenment? He said, five years. He said, uh, how can I achieve fast? No, no. Uh, if I put too much energy, but lots of energy, how long will it take? You know, it's very stress to have. So he said, he's thinking like, if you take less, he said, no, 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> because if you too much, want, okay, after you, uh, too much stress, okay, not like this. Okay, we are, yeah, we have to, we need energy. It doesn't say you have just to be relaxed, not like that. We 
you need energy, but at the same time, kind of relax in the same time. It's not like pushing you uh, more than your capacity, things like that. It's okay? Okay, we try a short uh, meditation. Okay, after I explain more antidotes about laziness. Okay.